What is propaganda? Propaganda is the dissemination of information facts, arguments, rumors, half-truths, or lies to influence public opinion. Propaganda often weaponized in heated debates, it conjures images of wartime posters and manipulative news anchors. Yet its history and function are far more nuanced. He said, we have a problem we're losing half the market in America because there is a taboo against women, women smoking, particularly smoking in the streets. He said, I want your help on that. So I said, before I can offer you a, a suggestion or a recommendation, I would like your authority to visit Dr. A. A. Brill, who was the leading psychoanalyst of his time. So I went to Dr. Brill and I said, can you tell me what cigarettes mean to women? And as quick as that, he said, cigarettes to women are torches of freedom that they use to dramatize their objection to the taboo against smoking by men. And then he added as an afterthought, and they titillate the erogenous zones of the lips. So I left and wondered what to do with that information. And I decided we would get debutantes to light torches of freedom in the Easter parade to protest man's inhumanity to women by the taboo against smoking. Within six weeks, smoking became an accepted pattern for women throughout the United States. From the pronouncements of ancient empires rallying their troops to the subtle emotional triggers embedded in social media algorithms, propaganda has been a constant presence throughout human history, adapting with each technological revolution. When was propaganda first used? People have employed the principles of propaganda for thousands of years, although the term propaganda, used in this sense, didn't come about until the 17th century. In World Wars the I and in the Seku, the operations of the Nazis' Ministry of Public Enlightenment and Propaganda and the broken campaign promises of a thousand politicians are highlighted examples of propaganda. To inform students of the history of communism, the term propaganda has yet another connotation, associated with the term agitation. The two terms were first used by the Russian theorist of Marxism, Georgi Plekhanov, and later elaborated upon by Vladimir Ilyich Lenin in a pamphlet, What is to be Done, 1902, in which he defined propaganda as the reasoned use of historical and scientific arguments to indoctrinate the educated and enlightened. He defined agitation as the use of slogans, parables, and half-truths to exploit the grievances of the uneducated and the unreasonable. Since he regarded both strategies as absolutely essential to political victory, he combined them in the term agitprop. Every unit of historical communist parties had an agitprop section, and to the communists the use of propaganda in Lenin's sense was commendable and honest. Thus, a standard Soviet manual for teachers of social sciences was entitled For the Propagandist of Political Economy, and a pocket-sized booklet issued weekly to suggest timely slogans and brief arguments to be used in speeches and conversations among the masses was called the agitator's notebook. Propaganda can be used in several areas, such as commercial advertising, public relations, political campaigns, diplomatic negotiations, legal arguments, and collective bargaining. It can be targeted toward groups of varying size and at the local, national, or global level. Propaganda thrives on the manipulation of emotions and the bypassing of critical thinking. 
It's an art form practiced by a diverse cast of characters, from governments and political parties to corporations and activist groups. Their arsenals hold a range of techniques, from the subtle to the audacious. Emotional triggers, fear, anger, and patriotism are potent motivators. Propagandists exploit these emotions to evoke a desired response, be it blind support for a cause or hostility towards a perceived threat. Images of war victims can incite fear, while nationalistic rhetoric can stoke anger at a foreign power. Slanting the narrative. Facts are powerful, but only when presented accurately. Propagandists often cherry-pick or distort information to fit their narrative. They might highlight positive statistics while omitting negative ones, creating a misleading picture of reality. Think of economic reports that downplay unemployment figures or environmental reports that downplay pollution levels. The bandwagon effect. Social pressure can be a powerful influence. Propagandists create a sense of widespread support by using statistics that exaggerate the number of adherents, showcasing testimonials from seemingly ordinary people, or staging rallies with carefully chosen camera angles. Think of political campaigns that claim to have unprecedented momentum, or social media movements that inflate their reach through bots and fake accounts. Dehumanization of opponents. Demonizing those who disagree is a classic tactic. By portraying them as inhuman, barbaric, or even subhuman, propagandists facilitate aggression and disregard for their opinions. Think of wartime posters depicting the enemy as monstrous creatures or political cartoons that use dehumanizing caricatures of opposing leaders. Glittering generalities. Vague, positive-sounding terms like freedom or progress can be used to mask a lack of specifics. This allows the audience to fill in the blanks with their own positive associations, making the message more palatable. Think of political slogans that evoke a sense of national pride without offering concrete policies. The information age has ushered in a new era of propaganda. The rise of social media has created fertile ground for the spread of misinformation and disinformation. Algorithms curate content based on user preferences, creating echo chambers where people are constantly bombarded with information that reinforces their existing beliefs. Disinformation campaigns can go viral in a matter of hours, fueled by anonymity and the ease of sharing. The line between truth and cleverly crafted fiction becomes increasingly blurry. So, how do we navigate this complex information landscape? Here are some tools to become a more discerning consumer. Source scrutiny. Always check the source of information. Is it a reputable news organization with a history of fact-checking, a government website with a vested interest, or a personal blog with an unknown agenda? Look for established institutions with a commitment to journalistic ethics. Fact-checking. Don't take everything at face value. Verify information with credible secondary sources, ones with a reputation for accuracy and objectivity. Look for evidence to support claims, not just opinions or emotional appeals. Utilize fact-checking websites and consult multiple sources before accepting information as true. Media Literacy Understanding basic media techniques used in advertising and persuasion can help us recognize propaganda tactics. Look for biased language, emotionally charged imagery, and the use of logical fallacies. Analyze the way visuals are used, the framing of arguments, and the language employed to evoke specific emotions. The power of why. Develop a healthy dose of skepticism. Ask yourself, who benefits from this information? What is the underlying agenda? Why is this message being presented in this specific way? By critically questioning the source and purpose of information, we can begin to identify potential biases and manipulations. Propaganda is a powerful tool, but it doesn't have to control us. 
By honing our critical thinking skills and becoming aware of the techniques employed, we can become empowered consumers of information. In today's world, it's a crucial skill for navigating the ever-shifting tides of information. Remember, knowledge is the ultimate. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to our channel and hitting that notification bell to stay updated with our latest content. Your support means the world to us.